Hey guys, it's Ikenna from CNC Labs. Today I'm going to be doing a personal project for some electric bikes that I've been building over the last few years. This is going to be a shameless plug. So I designed them based off of old school motorcycles from the early 1900s and they are just a blast to ride. So I've been doing the design in Fusion 360 and I'll be doing the CAM and CAM Lab. You can use pretty much any CAD software such as Onshape, SketchUp, or SolidWorks as long as you can export the file as an STL. Virtually all CAD programs will let you export as an STL file, so you should be good to use whatever program you're comfortable with. But for this, I'll show you the process with Fusion 360. In Fusion, select the part on the component section and we're going to save as STL. Select the folder you want to save to and go ahead and click save. Next, we'll be bringing the STL into CamLab. So you can go to camlab.cnc.com slash welcome and press let's go to get into the program. We have a ton more videos on our YouTube channel if you want more in-depth tutorials on how to use CamLab. First, we'll choose our machine. For this project, we'll be using long mill 30 by 30, so select the long mill 30 option. You can create your own machine profiles as well. Next, we'll import the STL file, press import and find your STL. Once the SCL loads, you can double click on it to bring up a menu at the bottom that allows you to flip and scale your model. Orient the model to the way you want it. In this particular project, we're just going to make sure that the front is facing the front of the grid and there's a small arrow at the bottom of the grid so you can see which way is forward. The positioning part of the software allows you to choose the origin point of the job. For this job, we're going to start it at the bottom left corner, so we'll uncheck origin center but keep the origin top since we want to start the job from the top of the material. You can see the end mill visualization move to the bottom left corner. So next we're going to select our tool. For this job we'll be using a 1 8 flat mill. Working our way down the right side we'll turn off pocket only. Depth first is turned on and clockwise is turned on. To cut just the perimeter we'll be using the finishing function which will only cut the perimeter profiles of the part. This works because we don't have any pockets or 3D features to cut for this part. We're going to select our feeds and speeds. We'll set our step down as 2 millimeters, feed rates as 1500 millimeters, and plunge rate to 500. HDPE is a fairly soft material and is easy to cut, with the exception that it tends to melt onto some bits. We'll adjust our speeds in UGS platform if we run into that issue. By clicking generate, you can see the visualization of the cuts with the black lines. It looks good, so we'll move on to one other thing, which are the cutout tabs. I'm going to set my cutout tabs at 2mm by 2mm because I want it to be small enough and easy enough that I can snap uh, without too much work. So we can check out the part and we can actually see where the cutout tabs are. It's uh, top, bottom, and left and right. So we're going to make sure that that looks good and we can export our G-code. We're going to save that, open it up in UGS platform. So we're going to change out our bit to the right one. Because my material is a bit warped, I'm going to be gluing the center and also drilling down the four corners. So we're just going to move our end mill to our start point. Set that as zero. We're going to be measuring the length of the part to make sure that our part is going to fit on the material. We're going to start our router and we're going to start our job. Once the job's finished, we're going to turn off our router. Move it out of the way. 
and we're gonna pull out our part. So we just gotta break off our cutout tabs. So we're just gonna clean it up with some sandpaper and get ready to install. So we're actually dog sitting Louie for Andy this evening, so you can see him running around. So yeah, once all the wiring is complete, we mount the bottom of the tank, the top of the tank, and the insulation for the center, and they are ready to go. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.